Hello, so we are gathering today to uh, answer some questions that Dr. Sabi's community has regarding his untimely passing. Um, if you can please tell me your name and the relationship you had with Dr. Sabi. My name is Mel Watkins, and I've had a 51 year relationship with Dr. Sabi. He and I have been friends since 1965. I originally met uh, Dr. Sabi when he was still Alfredo Bowman. I had just come home from the Air Force and he and my brother were in a revolutionary discussion uh, group that uh, they met all the time to discuss the situation uh, here in this country, in, in, in the United States. And he and I became very, very close friends very quickly. At the time, we would uh, drive up and down the coast, stopping at uh, different beaches and just sitting and looking at the ocean and discussing many different things. That was before either one of us got into uh, the discussion of health and nutrition. And one pivotal thing happened while uh, the discussion team was talking about the revolution and all of this. Uh, my mother walked through the room and she said, of all these things that I hear you young men talking about, I don't hear any discussion of love. And of course, everybody in their own minds went poo poo. <laughs> But 20 years later, we all came to the same conclusion that without love, you have nothing. So we continued to build on that foundation, including the herbs. Sabi and I would go to Herbs of Mexico all the time over in East LA. And one day when we were walking in, an elderly woman, a Mexican woman, stopped and said, if you have a business card, would you leave it with the people here? And he looked at her strangely and said, why? She said, you save souls, don't you? And he and I looked at each other, and from that point on, Sabi was so involved in the herbs that the herbs showed him the love of what you see now, and that is the creation of the compounds, the healing of people, the uh, maturing of the love factor that existed inside of him. Everybody knows that if you look at his lectures, if you listen to what he has to say, that that was always paramount because I've seen people do him dirt and he would still give them what was necessary to heal them. I've seen people take advantage of him financially and then come back a few years later riddled with disease and say they would not say anything, he would just help them overcome what the problem was. So to me that's a legacy. Now, I know that there's similarity, the physical similarity between Sabi and I is very similar. So I just want to let everybody know that he was my friend, he was my mentor, and I dearly miss him. I dearly miss him. And so that is um, another reason why you are present today, so that we can um, have an intimate outlook um, for the community because we do want to um, satisfy unanswered questions, um, again, with an intimate aspect of, of Dr. Sabi's intimate circle. And you can provide that for us because we do want to express love um, to the community 
and we again we want to make sure that people are um, given the correct answers uh, with regards to his untimely death so we greatly appreciate you being present here and providing um, any any comments and and details uh, leading up again to his untimely death um, so I do have just a few questions that might satisfy some of the uh, unanswered questions that the community has. Uh, one is uh, if you can tell us why Dr. Sabi's incarceration was not disclosed to the public. That is a question that each and every one of us has to think about, has to give some thought about because ever since his death, I have been looking at the major networks as far as the news is concerned. I saw nothing. I looked at all the newspapers. I saw nothing. And that to me speaks volumes of what finally happened. We all know that after his case in the Supreme Court of New York, where he won, where he was, is the only person that has triumphed over the medical establishment. The day that he won his victory, that was the day that the story came out about Tawana Brawley and her being raped. And that was a smokescreen because eventually we all found out that that story was a hoax. Now, starting all the way from the beginning, now, and again, for those that don't remember, Dr. Sabi was originally arrested because his center put in print that he had cured or that they had cured AIDS. Then, he was arrested for practicing medicine without a license. He proved that he did, and the charges were false. So ever since then, we have known that there was circumstances lurking in the background that we should be aware of, but being the brave soul that he has always been, and the person full of integrity. He knew that his only choice was to go forward with his work. And his work impressed more and more and more people throughout this world in different countries. So, so uh, whether or not there was some foul, foul play, I have no idea. The thing that he and I always insisted on was truth. So if we can um, touch base on why Dr. Savy's incarceration was not made public, it actually was public knowledge. It just wasn't national news, correct? It was public. His incarceration was, a, was public knowledge in Central and South America, but, not, but only by way of the Internet in the United States. And to me, again, that speaks volumes. And as far as it being disclosed, could you also touch base on what Dr. Sabi himself wanted made, made public? He did not express any desire to make that public because all through the years, he has always respected my business and I have respected his. And if there was something to be disclosed, I always had to check with him first. So 
Oh. Uh, that that information was not disclosed under those circumstances. For at his own for his own request, correct? Right. I wanted to actually touch base on that. So, you know, people are asking and speaking um, of the conditions of the jail cell um, and how I, I know that there is a dialogue of Dr. Sebi uh, passing of pneumonia and they are just baffled at how of how a holistic herbal uh, doctor who has healed so many people of so many ailments, how could he have uh, died from pneumonia? Uh, a couple of things. Number one, while I was there talking to him, I looked down and saw that there was water on the floor, on the concrete floor. The floor stayed moist constantly. And under those circumstances, it would be very easy for this to occur. However, my estimation of his state of health while I was there was that he had sufficient strength to last through the mandated 60 days that the judge, that the court originally gave him. Keep in mind that when I was there, it was within a few days of the 60 days being up. However, his new attorney told me that the judges were about to go on a hiatus, a two week vacation, which means that nothing would be done in between. So, so it's, it's my estimation, and again, I, I hesitate from guessing. I only want to tell the truth of what I saw. And he had a little congestion in his chest, but in my estimation of his physical strength, I thought he had the strength to see it through. And um, I would imagine they try to provide him with some sort of medication or pharmaceuticals because um, from what we understand, he wanted to receive some of his herbal formulas, but they refused. Well, when I went there, I took some of his herbal formulas with me and I'll whether or not uh, they were given to him or confiscated, I don't know. Now, as far as what he was given, what, it, what he and Pablo were given to eat, um, I'd have problems feeding it to my dog, if I had a dog. Um, it was garbage. It was garbage. And the, 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 the crowded situation and the overall conditions. Uh, and can you touch base on the guards? Oh, the, the jail cell. Oh, oh, the guards, uh, they acted friendly, but you can tell that that was not the case. Uh, when I first walked in, um, they took me into a little small cubicle and this one guard asked me to uh, empty what was in my pockets. He felt on my pocket and my identification and I also had uh, a hundred dollar bill in my pocket and when I took it all out it was on the top and he pointed to it and pointed to himself and he ended up taking the money. But that's what they do. There is so much poverty, so little go to go around in Honduras. Everybody is 
trying to get whatever crumbs that they can get. Even the guards, especially the guards. And we know, we know that in any civilized system, police guards are not free to totally act on their own. They get their orders. So I would assume that their orders, they had their orders, and there was, well, see, another thing I saw in Sebi while I was there, and that is he had began to recognize the fact that they had no intention, the court had no intention whatsoever of allowing him to be released. Let me go back a little bit. That was a previous case where he had uh, some money. That was on the island of Roatan, right off the coast of Honduras. And that case was resolved. The money was sent on to the capital to be eventually forwarded back to him. At the time that that was concluded, his legal advice whether it's from the uh, police or his legal team or whatever, informed him that the $10,000 that is the limit one can carry can be, you can carry more money, all you have to do is, is declare it. And Sebi told me himself that he declared the money on his form before he got off the plane. And they arrested him anyway. One of the reasons is because the previous case had been left open. And when he went to jail the second time, then they combined the two cases. One for $27,000 and one for $50,000. So now, the charge is money laundering for $77,000. That was his own money. Yes, it might be the law that you have to show that that is your personal money. However, nobody walks around with the necessary papers to do that. Nobody. So, as far as I'm concerned, the legal advice he was given as far as declaring the amount of money that he had on him was a setup and bogus information. So, but I understand all the people out there, the people that follow Sebi, and they want answers. It would be wrong of us to give answers that we're guessing at. And in the near future, additional information will come to surface. There were, well, actually, with the exception of a very few people in Honduras that's in his corner. And when I say very few, I mean very few, although he was known not only all over Honduras, no matter where he went. He, he was known all over Central America and South America because a couple of years ago, there were, there were interviewers, there were people connected to the media in different countries that sat down with him at Usha. And once that information got out and everybody became aware, they were looking at Honduras saying, you, you, never, you don't even protect one of your own? Well, I think, Mel, you have personally and intimately you know, answered uh, what we feel have been the, the most... Um, 
asked questions with regards to Dr. Sabi's death, his incarceration, and the details behind that. Uh, in conclusion, we, I would like to ask if you can briefly discuss, um, because again, you were best friends with Dr. Sabi, um, if you do have any intimate details as far as his intentions with the company and the visions for any of his future endeavors. Dr. Sebi, again, had grand design on the future. I cannot even personally put myself in the same league with him because the man had a photographic memory. He could recall times, people, dates, what the weather was, the time of day it was, how he was feeling at the time. And I always thought it was so magnificent. If only I could do that. I'm struggling with, to remember yesterday. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Sebi wanted, number one, the foundation of Bilingo, which in one of the languages in Africa means love. He wanted that to be able to supply aid to many people, as many people as possible. And although he coined the name, the African Man uh, Biomineral Balance, that should not put people off of other nationalities. He was just so adamant about his his own, his, his self and his own people. And he wanted to help everybody, everybody. He wanted whether they're Chinese, whether they are Arab, whether they're African, whether they are English, uh, Australian, American, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. That's the love that he had in his heart and the forgiveness even for people that tried to do him dirt. Now, he also wanted to establish centers in major cities throughout the United States so that person could walk in and get nutritional, natural nutritional food so that we could stop eating the garbage that we're funneled into on a daily basis and stop eating the meat that corrupts our bodies and the sugar that corrupts all the glands in our body. So he also had the desire to um, expand his production of compounds so that they would be really readily available to everybody. And I know he uh, did make emphasis particularly for the uh, African countries as well. Correct? Oh yes, oh yes. One of the things that we talked about during the time I was there, you have to understand, the first time I went to Usher was in 1987. That was when he had a few cottages there and he was staying in one of them and uh, uh, it was just a, 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 the basic the basic outline of what he saw for the future. And I've been back four, five, six times since then. And it's always better, always better. And people always wanted to, to, to sit with him and question him and talk about things. And to the point where he could almost find no privacy whatsoever. He was, sometimes he would be at his house and people would be trying, be knocking on his door at two or three o'clock in the morning just to talk with him. But he had some grand ideas and basically he wanted to be able to get fresh food and natural food. And we even talk about, talked about incorporating um, 
the farm system, some people that owned land to raise natural food and stop trying to uh, pawn the hybrid foods off on people. Hybrid, pe hybrid, hybrid foods always contain starch, of which a small portion is a poison and ways of getting the old garbage and stuff out of the body that we have accumulated since childhood and trying to improve one's health. He had many, many plans, but alas, he was stopped mid-stride, but it's my opinion, he saw what was happening and he went out on his terms. He did not wait for the penal system there to play with him like a, a doll in a cage. And that was the integrity of my friend, Dr. Sabi. In, so in closing, Mel, uh, if you can just speak directly to Dr. Sabi's community, uh, because we are, because there are extreme emotions, um, understandably so, and yes. um, as you spoke on Dr. Sabi's basic foundation of love, we want to ask the community to move forward on love, and because you did have such an intimate relationship with Dr. Sabi, if you could just, again, speak directly to the community as far as what you feel Dr. Sabi would want for his community to move forward with. Mm -hmm. um, many times at the Usha village, people express the desire to sit and talk with Sabi at length. And I told them many times that his material in lecture form is already on the internet. And we all have seen his practice of love and benevolence in his life, which was paramount. The thing that happened when the court case started was that he was asked to place his hand on a Bible and swear to tell the truth. And he said, no, if I don't have the integrity to tell the truth, although all those people that have been in the court and did that, they lied to you. So he proclaimed his own integrity and the judge accepted that. That's what he wishes for the people that follow him. Have the integrity to tell the truth and to examine the information that he has already given. One thing I would like to say to everyone out there, please download as much of the information as you can, as soon as you can, because we have a feeling that one day that much of his information will come up missing. So if you have to, whatever you have to do, download it to your private applications or a uh, uh, hard drive or, what, uh, or, or a hard copy or whatever is necessary. Don't let the information be lost. That would be doing a, a vast disservice to Dr. Sabi and all the work that he has done. And with regard to the accusations and the, uh, uh, the accusations of, of what has happened to him and Pablo, if you could just speak on on what you feel Dr. Sabi would like for people to, how they would, how he would like for his community to be, to be reacting to this situation. Dr. Sabi would, 
You know, that laughter of his when he, especially when he found something totally ludicrous and, and, and insane, he would just dismiss it. That, I'm not asking everyone out there to dismiss this tragedy, but give it a lot of thought. And eventually we will have to get back to the business of how we are dealing with our human bodies, how we are dealing with the people around us. Continue to spread the word, continue to deliver his message because it's of vital importance. We are in a situation where we have not had adequate nutrition, iron, or many other substances to put us on an even footing mentally. So that is our work. That is Dr. Sabi's desire. Many times we talked about how, what is the key to getting people back on track as far as their mental abilities are concerned. And that is adequate nutrition so that the chemistry inside the body can can be sufficient so that we can see clearly in a person that is diseased, it is very easy to become delusional. When you say hello, they may take it as a threat and shoot you. So it's our responsibility to follow the legacy of Dr. Sabi and put our bodies and our brains and our love in proper perspective. And we have to have proper nutrition in order to do that. Because if the chemistry on the inside of the body is skewed, then our view of the world is skewed. The eyes are simply an instrument to see with. The brain interprets what it sees. So that to me is Dr. Sabi's legacy and we have to all accept the responsibility to carry it on. We cannot let this be lost. We cannot. That would be the real crime. Thank you very much, Mel. We really, really appreciate this meeting and we hope that uh, the community appreciates it as well. It's my pleasure. And I, again, I want to reiterate, Dr. Sabi was my friend. And I know there's a lot of similarity between us physically. But unfortunately, my friend is gone. But he lives through us. Yes, yes. Thank you. My pleasure.